In the last section, we realized that there was going to be a little bit of issue with our piece of auth state. There's some piece of state on there that we can only update after we make an asynchronous request. We eventually came to the realization that we've been writing action creators that are synchronous in nature. So we run them and they instantly return an action. This does not work out for our case though, because we want to authenticate a user, which is going to take a request, and then only after that request succeeds do we have the information we need to actually return an action or dispatch an action, as it were. In this section, we're going to address this by first writing out our action creator with the authentication request, and then make some changes to it to ensure that it works in an asynchronous fashion. So first, we need to make an action creator that will attempt to log the user in. So just something that's going to say, hey Firebase, log in this user with this email and password. Now to be clear, the code that we're about to add will not work the way that we want it to. It is just a starting point. We're going to kind of play around with it a little bit until it gets working. Okay, so first, first attempt is going to be just that, <laughs> an attempt. So inside my action creator file, I'm going to make a new action creator say export const, I'm going to call this login user with the very obvious purpose or job of authenticating a user. I expect it to be called with an email and password. And notice that I have the curly braces on here which means I expect this to be called with an object that has an email and a password property on it. Next we're going to add some logic to handle our Firebase login. First we will import Firebase up at the top of the file. So at the very, very top, I will import Firebase from Firebase. And then down at the bottom, inside our action creator that we just created, we're going to create, we're going to add in our authentication call. So again, for right now, we're just going to attempt to sign in a user and not worry about creating a new account or anything like that. Just sign in a user. So we'll say firebase.auth.sign in, you remember this long one, right? With email and password. And we're going to pass in the email and password. Again, just to make sure that everything here is crystal clear, this call is going to make a request to Firebase's servers. So the earliest time that we can get access to any response from it or like any anything that says like, hey, everything worked out okay, is by adding in a then clause because this is a promise right here. So I'll say then when you get back the user, just go ahead and, and console log the user. So the then clause will be executed after the request is finished and it will be called with the user if one exists. If we enter an account that does not exist or invalid credentials, then we're not going to see anything out of this promise right here because it's going to hit a ca uh, catch case and we're not handling that catch on here right now. Okay. So after all this big lead up, after all this you know, big deal, how do we fix this issue with asynchronous action creators? How do we only dispatch an action after we hit this then right here? Because right? this technically right here is exactly when we would want to return an action. To do this, we are going to use a supporting library called Redux Thunk. So that is like the big solution here. We're going to use Redux Thunk to handle asynchronous action creators. Redux Thunk is used to handle any type of asynchronous action creator that we might need throughout our code base. So right now we're using it for Firebase, but it could be for any type of Ajax request or any long running process that you could possibly imagine. Redux Thunk is a NPM module that we need to install and actually set up, so we're going to go through that process now. At the command line, I'm going to in, uh, install Redux Thunk by running npm install dash dash save redux dash thunk. And then while that goes, we're going to look at a quick little diagram. It's going to help us understand what this thing's doing for us. Okay, what is Redux Thunk really doing? So first, I want to uh, go back and review a little bit our default action creator rules. So by default, I mean like how they work right now, right? Like without Redux Thunk at all. Action creators are functions. They must return an action, and an action is an object without a type property and optionally a payload as well. So this is how actions behave right now, or action creators behave right now. So the whole point of Redux Thunk is to allow us to bend these rules. Like that is really what it does. It allows us to bend the rules of action creators. Here's how it bends the rules. Once we re install Redux Thunk, we can either 
create an action creator, which is a function. It must return an action. An action must be an object. Or, or like so here's, here's the big or. Here's the bending the rules part. Really breaking them, I guess, but you know what I mean. With Redux Thunk installed, action creators are functions. So no change there. Action creators must return a function. So that is the new part right here. Instead of returning an action, which is an object, we can return a function from our action creator. That function will then be called automatically for us with dispatch. And that last part there, that, that dispatch, this is the real magic part right here. Dispatch is the magic part. If you think back to when we, uh, we first went over uh, Redux inside the JS Playgrounds tool, we used store.dispatch to dispatch or process an action or send it off to all of our different reducers. So the whole magic behind Redux Thunk is that it allows us to bend the rules of action creators by allowing us to return a function that gives us direct access to dispatch, the dispatch method. And that dispatch method will allow us to return, or excuse me, to manually dispatch an action to all of our different reducers. Okay, still, again, a lot of lecturing here. Um, let's just verify that the install went successfully. Yep, here's Redux Thunk. Let's take a quick break now and then come back and figure out how to use Redux Thunk in practice. <laughs>